What's up everybody? So today we're going to talk about how Foam is sort of a killer app for 3D printing and what some of the applications are for it today. So if you've ever played any sports, there's a lot of padding involved. You've got shin guards in soccer, you've got the shoulder pads in football, you have bike seats and padding inside of biking. There's a lot of padding in the world that people have to wear for protection. The problem is most of this padding is actually created with closed cell foam and foam is basically just bubbles inside of some sort of plastic, which then creates styrofoam or the cushioning inside of a pillow or anything along those lines. The problem with this closed cell foam is that as a bunch of bubbles, as this expanded plastic basically, it doesn't breathe. There's no free airflow through it because those bubbles are all connected to each other. There's no channel through them. It's just a membrane that's very light and not very dense. So it compresses well, but it doesn't give you much breathability. And this sucks when you're doing an athletic activity like a sport or riding a motorcycle or riding a bike because you're trying to let yourself breathe, but the protection that you have to wear won't let you but it has to have cushion. And the only way to make that sort of a cushion has been to do those sort of foam pads. But there's another way of doing it. With 3D printing, you're able to control very small details about a part. The very infill of like an FDM part can be springy if it's made from like TPU. And with resin printers, it's really easy to do lattices and very complex shapes that can be grown, but can't really be manufactured. There's not a good way of making lattices or foams that are well controlled with traditional processes because it's just either too expensive compared to regular foam or it just doesn't have the same kind of breathability. With 3D printing, you're able to create these really complex channels so that you get free airflow, you're able to get the foam squishiness that you need, but then you're able to take that even further. And within the realm of a single part, you're actually able to vary the properties of the part. So like in the case of the Adidas 4D shoe, this shoe is designed to both be a cushion, but also to have variable levels of cushion throughout the shoe, which makes it really powerful because you can have the heel be a little bit stiffer, but then the toes a little bit softer. This is a huge amount of capability. Another example is helmets, like in football or biking. Cav Sports has made an FDM printed bicycle helmet that is custom designed to the user. Again, an advantage of 3D printing, but in addition to being able to customize to the size and shape of a person's head, they're able to create high breathability through the complex geometry of the part, while at the same time also tuning the cushioning of the part in each individual region to make sure it's as safe as it can possibly be. We did the same kind of work at Slant 3D where we worked with motorcycle armor and yes, shoe insoles where we were able to 3D print these complex lattices that have just the performance that you need, but a huge amount of flexibility because you were able to create these complex lattices, basically these weaves that you weren't able to make with other processes while still creating the shape of the part, which is also really tough in other processes. You can create meshes and weaves in flat pack formats, but then you gotta cut them and shape them and mold them into whatever the ultimate padding shape is. So when we were working with motorcycle armor, it was all about the breathability while still maintaining the protection. But this is scaling up even more, not to just like customized sports equipment, but to actual end use parts. Desktop Metal recently released their free foam concept where they 3D print a small lattice version of a foam part, like the seat of a car, but then putting it through a small baking hot air process, they're able to have it then expand out. So they get the expandability of the foam, but they get the close packing of the original 3D printed parts so they can move many more of these much more quickly without having to like vacuum shrink them, which saves in post-processing. But then they also get the lattices of that foam itself so they get really tight control of the feel and fit of that foam part, which is an excellent application of this whole thing. And again, Carbon has done football helmets, they've done bike seats. We've worked with shin guards and motorcycle armor. Desktop metal is doing seats and armrests and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of areas where foam can be used. Now there is still a cost component. Right now a lot of 3D printing is centralized to semi-custom or kind of high-end products. But the Adidas 4D shoe has been mass produced for a few years now and is quite popular. It's made real units. The desktop metal seats can be used in car manufacturing, real quantities of units. 
and we were able to produce motorcycle padding for only slightly more cost than typical closed cell foam padding, and again, had much higher performance. Mainly because there's lower expectations for a foam part, which is gonna be covered and buried, to have super high tolerances or high surface finish. It is a functional piece, so it's perfect for 3D printing mass manufacturing, where some of the QC standards are a bit more fluid. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, talking about where foam can be used with 3D printing. The amount of control of individual areas of a part to make it stiffer and harder, using the same material throughout, while also having high breathability and high customizability to fit to a person, because that's where most of this padding is, is a really, really good application for 3D printing and should be utilized more. Any place that has padding that is a higher end product should immediately be investigating how they can use additive to make those products. Thanks everybody for watching that video. Please comment down below if there's other kind of categories that you'd like us to look at, or if there's something that we missed inside of this video, either key products that we didn't talk about or other companies that we should be talking about. Give us a like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos on the channel. I think they're over here someplace. Have a great day, everybody.